ओम श्री साई राम श्री साई सच्चरित रिटन बाय हेमत पंजी एंड ट्रांसलेटेड बाय गुना जी चैप्टर फोर्टीन इन द लास्ट चैप्टर वी डिस्क्राइब्ड हाउ बाबा वर्ड एंड ग्रेस क्यूर्ड मेनी इनक्यूरेबल डिजीजेस नाउ वी शुल डिस्क्राइब हाउ बाबा ब्लेस्ड मिस्टर रतन जी वाडिया विद एन इश्यू The life of this saint is naturally sweet in and out. His various doings, eating, walking and his natural sayings are all so sweet. His life is bliss incarnate. Sai gave it out as a means of his devotees remembrance to him. He gave them various stories of duty and action which ultimately led them to true religion. His object may be that people should live happily in this world but they should be ever cautious and gain the object of their life that is self realization we get human body as a result of merits in past births and it is worthwhile that with its aid we should attain devotion and liberation in this life so we should never be lazy but always be on the alert to gain our end and aim of life if you daily hear the leelas that is stories of sai you will always see him day and night you will remember him in your mind when you assimilate sai in this way your mind will lose its fickleness and if you go on in this manner it will finally be merged in pure consciousness raton ji of nanded now let us come to the main story of this chapter in nanded in the nizam state there lived a parsi mil contractor and trader by name raton ji shapur ji wadia he had amassed a large amount of money and had acquired fields and lands he had got cattle horses and conveyances and was very prosperous to all outward appearances he looked very happy He looked very happy and contented but inwardly and really he was not so providential dispensation in search that no one in this world is completely happy and rich raton ji was no exception to this he was liberal and charitable gave food and clothing to the poor and helped all in various ways the people took him to be a good and happy man but raton ji thought himself miserable as he had no issue male or female for a long time as kirtan that is singing glorious of the lord without love or devotion music of singing without rhythmical accompaniments brahmin without the sacred thread proficiency in all arts without common sense pilgrimage without repentance and ornamentation without a necklace or ugly and useless so is the house of a man or householder without a male issue raton ji always brooded on this matter and said in his mind would god be ever pleased to grant me a son He thus looked morous had no relish for his food day and night he was enveloped with anxiety whether he would ever be blessed with a son he had a great regard for dasagano maharaj he saw him and opened his heart before him dasagano advised him to go to shirdi take baba's darshan fall at his feet and seek his blessing and pray for issue raton ji liked the idea and decided to go to shirdi after some days he went to shirdi took baba's darshan and fell at his feet
Then opening a basket, he took out a beautiful garland of flowers and placed it around Baba's neck and offered him a basket of fruits. With great respect, he then sat near Baba and prayed to him saying, Many persons who find themselves in difficult situations come to you and you relieve them immediately. Hearing this, I have sought anxiously your feet. Please therefore do not disappoint me. Sai Baba then asked him for Dakshina of Rs. 5 which Ratonji intended to give but added that he had already received Rs. 3, 14, 0 from him and that he should pay the balance only. Hearing this, Ratonji was rather puzzled. He could not make out as to what Baba meant. That was the first time he thought that he went to Shiri. And how was it that Baba said that he had earlier already got Rs. 3, 14, 0 from him? He could not solve the riddle. But he sat at Baba's feet and gave the balance of Dakshina asked for. Explained to Baba fully as to why he came and sought his help and prayed that Baba should bless him with a son. Baba was moved and told him not to be worried and that thenceforward his bad days had ended. He then gave him Udi, placed his hand on his head and blessed him saying that Allah that is, God would satisfy his heart's desire. Then after taking Baba's leave, Ratonji returned to Nandir and told Das Siganu everything that took place at Shirdi. He said that everything went on well there, that he got Baba's darshan and blessing with Prashad. But there was one thing which he could not understand. Baba said to him that he had got three rupees three fourteen zero before. Please explain as to what Baba meant by this remark. He said to Das Ganu, I never went to Shirdi before, and how how could I give him the sum to which Baba referred? To Das Ganu also. It was a puzzle and he pondered much over it for a long time. Sometime afterwards, it struck him that Ratonji had received some days ago a Mohammedan saint by name Mauli Sahib in his house and had spent some money for his reception. This Mauli Sahib was coolly saint well known to the people of Nanded. When Ratanji decided to go to the Shirdi, this Mauli Sahib accidentally came to Ratanji's house. Ratanji knew him and loved him, so he gave a small, small party in his honor. Das Ganu got from Ratanji the Yedi or Memu of expenses of this reception and everybody was wonderstruck to see that the expenses amounted to exactly rupees three fourteen zero. Nothing more, nothing less. They all came to know that Baba was omniscient, that thought he lived in Shirdi. He knew that what happened outside far away from Shirdi. In fact, he knew the past, present and future and could identify himself heart and soul with anybody. In this particular instance, how could he know the reception given to Mauli Sahib and the amount spent there, therefore, unless he could identify himself with him and be one with him? Ratonji was satisfied with this explanation and his faith in Baba was confirmed and increased. In due time afterwards, he was blessed with his son and his joy knew no bounds. It is said that he had in all a dozen, that is twelve, issues of which only four survived. In a footnote, 
Towards the end of this chapter, it is said that Baba told Rao Bahadur Hari Vinayak Sate, after the death of his first wife, to remarry and that he would get a son. R. B. Sate married second time. The first two issues by his, this wife were daughters and he therefore felt very despondent. But the third issue was his son. Baba's word did turn out true and he was satisfied. Dakshina Mimansa Now we shall close this chapter with a few remarks about Dakshina. It is a well-known fact that Baba always asked for Dakshina from people who went to see him. Somebody may ask a question. If Baba was a fakir and perfectly non-attached, why should he ask for Dakshina and care for money? We shall consider this question broadly now. First, for a long time, Baba did not accept anything. He stored burnt matches and filled his pocket with them. He never asked anything from anybody, whether he be a devotee or otherwise. If anybody placed before him a piece of piece or two, he purchased oil or tobacco. He was fond of tobacco for he always smoked a beedi or chilim, that is an earthen pipe. Then some persons thought that they could not see the saints empty handed and they therefore placed some copper coins before Baba. If a pice was placed before him, he used to pocket it if it was a two pice coin. It was re returned immediately. Then after Baba's fame had spread far and wide, people began to flock in numbers and Baba began to ask Dash Dakshina from them. It is said in the Shruti, that is Veda, that puja of the gods is not complete unless a golden coin was offered. If a coin was necessary in the puja of the gods, why should it be not so in the puja of the saints also? Ultimately, the Shastras laid it down that when one goes to see God, King, Saint or Guru, he should not go empty-handed. He should offer something, preferably coin or money. In this connection, we may notice the precepts recommended by the Upanishads. The, the Brihadaranya Upanishad, the Brihadaranyak Upanishad says that the Lord Prajapati advised the gods, men and demons by one letter, Da. The gods understood by this letter that they should practice one Dhamma, that is self-control. The men thought or understood that they should practice. Second, Dana, that is charity. The demons understood that they should practice. Third one, Daya, that is compassion. To men, charity or giving was recommended. The teacher in the Taittiriya Upanishad exhorts its pupils to practice charity and other virtues. Regarding charity, he says, give with faith, give with magnanimity, that is liberally, give with modesty, with awe and with sympathy. In order to teach the devotees the lesson of charity and to remove their attachment to money and thus to purify their minds, Baba extracted the kshina from them. But there was this peculiarity, as Baba said, that he had to give back hundred times more of what he received. There are many instances in which this has happened. To quote as instance, Mr. Gam, Ganpat Rao Bodas, the famous actor 
says in his Marathi autobiography that on Baba's praising him often and often for Dakshina, he emptied his money bag before him. The result of this was, as Mr. Boda says, that in later life he never lacked money as it came to him abundantly. There were also secondary meanings of Dakshina in many cases in which Baba did not want any pecuniary amount. To quote two instances, one, Baba asked rupees 15 as Dakshina from Gigi Narke, who replied that he did not have even a pie. Then Baba said, I know you have no money, but you are reading Yoga Vashishta. Give me Dakshina from that. Giving Dakshina in this case meant deriving lessons from the book and lodging them in the heart where Baba recites. Second one. In the second case, Baba asked a certain lady, that is Mrs. Aryat Tharkar, to give six rupees as Dakshina. The lady felt pained as she has, she had nothing to give. Then her husband explained to her that Baba wanted six inner enemies, that is, lust, anger, avarice, etc., to be surrendered to him. Baba agreed with this explanation. It is to be noted that though Baba collected a lot of money by Dakshina, he would distribute the whole amount the same day and the next morning he would become a poor fakir as usual. When Baba took his Mahasamadhi after receiving thousands and thousands of rupees as Dakshina for about 10 years, he had only a few rupees in his possession. In short, Baba's main object in taking Dakshina from his devotees was to teach them the lessons of renunciation and purification. Postscript Mr. B. B. D. O. of Tana, retired Mamal Tadar and a great devotee of Baba, has written an article on this subject Dakshina in Shri Sai Lila Magazine, Volume 7, page 6 to 26, in which he says, amongst other things, as follows Baba did not ask Dakshina from all. If some gave Dakshina without being asked, he sometimes accepted it, and at other times, he refused it. He asked it from certain devotees only. He never demanded it from those devotees who thought in their minds that Baba should ask them for it. And then they should pay it. If anybody offered it against his wish, he never touched it. And if he kept it there, he asked him to take it away. He asked for small or big amounts from devotees according to their wish devotion and convenience. He asked it even from women and children. He never asked all the rich for it, nor from all the poor. Baba never got angry with those from whom he asked Dakshina and who did not give it. If any Dakshina was sent through some friend who forgot to hand over the same to Baba, he reminded him somehow of it and made him pay it. Once on some occasions, Baba used to return some sum from the amount tendered as Dakshina and ask the donor to guard it or keep it in his shrine for worship. This procedure benefited the donor a devotee immensely. If anybody offered more than he originally intended to give, he returned the extra amount. Sometimes he asked more Dakshina from some 
than what they originally intended to give and if they had no money asked them to get or borrow from others from some the demanded dakshina three or four times a day out of the amount collected as dakshina baba spent very little for his own sake that is for buying chilim that is clay pipe and fuel for his duni that is sacred fire and all the rest he distributed as charity in varied varying proportions to various persons all the paraphernalia of the shirdi samstan was brought by various rich devotees at the instance and suggestion of radha krishna mai baba always used to get wild and scolded those who brought costly and rich articles he said to mr nara saheb chandokar that all his property consisted of one cupping that is cold piece one cupping that is cold piece one stray piece of cloth one kafni and a tumbrel that is tin pot and that all the people troubled him by bringing all these unnecessary useless and costly articles women in wealth are the two main obstacles in the way of our parmartha that is spiritual life and baba and provided in shirdi two institutions that is dakshina and radha krishna mai whenever they came to him he demanded dakshina from them and asked them to go to the school that is radha krishna mai's house if they stood these two tests well that is if they showed that they were free from attachment for women and wealth their progress in spirituality was rapid and assured by baba's grace and blessings mr dio has also quoted passages from the gita and upanishads and shown the charity given in a holy place and to a holy personage conduces to the donor's welfare to a great degree what is more holy than shirdi and its presiding deity sai baba bo to shri sai peace be to all om shri sai ram